So far I have designed two types of steering wheel. One is made with a game controller and the other with an Arduino. So a lot of people ask what is the best of these two. So today we will talk about this, some very important points about Arduino steering wheel. First, I will explain some issues with the game controller steering wheel. The first is that each axis of the game controller has a death zone. The dead zone is the area around your controller's thumbstick that doesn't input a command until your thumbstick moves out of the dead zone. So, because of this dead zone, it is difficult to play some games with the steering wheel. Examples, Euro Truck Simulator 2. You can see that after I turn the steering wheel a little, the wheel starts to turn. So, because of this, it is difficult for you to play games like this when there is a dead zone. The second one is wheel force feedback. The steering wheel force feedback that can apply actual forces on an axis of control such as the steering wheel, not just simple vibration. Games use this ability to create a greater sense of immersion, simulated crash damage, road feel, oversteer, understeer, engine vibration, and more, to increase the challenge of driving well. But a game controller gives only a vibration feedback. Force feedback is not a mandatory factor to play games, but if you are thinking of drifting, force feedback is very necessary. I mean, it is easy to drift. So for these few reasons, I suggest you to choose the Arduino steering wheel because the Arduino wheel does not have a dead zone, and force feedback works fine. But the next problem is that making an Arduino steering wheel requires a bit more money. So I will give some solution to this. Using a potentiometer for the steering wheel. This is similar to the game controller wheel, but there are some advantages. First, I connect the potentiometer to the x-axis. You can see that there is no activity. It doesn't really work here because the potentiometer only supports the Y, Z, and RX axis. But you have one way to use a potentiometer. You can select the Y axis for this and use it as a wheel. But this does not allow you to use the clutch pedal. You can only use the wheel, gas pedal, and brake pedal. But this method is better than the game controller wheel, because there is no dead zone anywhere in this. You may notice that there is a small problem with the wheel rotation. The reason for this is that a potentiometer can only be rotated 270 degrees. As a solution, a table fan gearbox is installed. After calibration, you can get a 900 degree wheel rotation. But remember force feedback does not support this method. This is the cheapest way to do it. You only need three potentiometers and an Arduino board for this method. You can make H shifter, paddle shifters if you want, but there is one more problem. That's because the potentiometer has a limit of 270 degrees, so the potentiometer may break when playing. If you can, use a wheel angle of 720 degrees when you play. The second method. You can use this rotary encoder module for the steering wheel. Here are the benefits. This is better than the potentiometer. You can buy this at a low price. This does not break like a potentiometer because this does not have any rotation limit. You don't need a fan gearbox for this. And you can also use the clutch pedal. This is the diagram. Separate resistors are not required to connect this. The required resistors come in this module. Change these settings and set the PPR value to 20. You can see it works well. Now you have a problem with why I use this encoder when making my steering wheel. The reason is PPR value. PPR means pulses per revolution. For example, this encoder has 100 pulses per revolution, then one pulse makes the encoder rotate one hundredth of a revolution or 3.6 degrees. 
and 100 pulses will make the encoder rotate one revolution. A 100 PPR encoder can get a count every 3.6 degrees, and a 200 PPR encoder can get a count every 1.8 degrees. Now you can understand that as the encoder PPR value increases, its response speed and sensitivity also increase. So this encoder has a value of 20 PPR, and the encoder I am currently using has a value of 600 PPR. Now you understand that there is a big difference between these two. Anyway, this has a low PPR value, and the wheel sensitivity is also a little low, but you can use it for the steering wheel. You can connect it directly to the steering wheel shaft. Okay, now I show you something crazy. I am now at the Moza Racing Wheel website. There are some wheel modules there. Here you can see the encoder resolution. The first one is 32,768. The second one is the same value. The third one is 262,144. Yes, I was also surprised the first time I saw this. But I think we can't use such a big value encoder because the speed between our components, like USB refresh rate, software latency, Arduino microchip speed and bit value will definitely affect it. There is only one question about force feedback. I tested this in different ways but never did FFB work. Maybe because the PPR value is low, but I am not sure about this. So this is also the cheapest way to make an Arduino steering wheel. You can first use a cheap encoder like this and then buy a good encoder and install it. That way you can build a complete FFB steering wheel part by part. The third method. You can use a print encoder for this. Many people use this encoder. You can find this in an old printing machine. It is often in the form of a disc like this. But for some printers, the encoder comes as a motor like this. It actually looks like a motor, but it has an encoder sensor inside or outside. The easiest way for you to find out if it's an encoder is to have a disc like this behind the motor or have about five or six wires inside the motor. With these three methods, you can make your steering wheel for less money. Now let's talk about the motors. When using a motor for the steering wheel, the torque of the motor is very important. Actually, torque is related to physics, but even if I explain it to you, it will be a little difficult for you to understand. So let me give you some idea about what torque is. Let's use a simple example to explain torque. Turning a wrench to loosen a bolt. Imagine you have a wrench and you are trying to loosen a bolt. When you apply force to the handle of the wrench, you create torque. Now imagine that you have a hard to loosening the bolt. That means you need more force to loosen the bolt. Then we usually use a long wrench. This can generate more torque. In this example, the torque is the rotational force you're applying to the bolt. This actually makes sense for several scientific reasons. This is just a basic idea for understanding torque. In a DC motor torque also means rotational power. For example, as you can see now, a load like this is connected to a motor and a force is applied to lift it up. This moment torque is created. If the motor doesn't lift the load even if you give it maximum power, it means that you need more torque. Now you can understand when we use a motor for the steering wheel, the torque is very important. You want a more realistic driving feel, so the wheel should be able to fight your hands. If you are going to buy a motor, the 775 DC motor is the most suitable motor for your budget. And if you can find it, you can also use this type of motors. We have another way to increase the torque of the motor. In this way, by attaching a small pulley to the motor and rotating the larger pulley through it, the torque can be increased. It can also be increased by connecting another motor in the same way. As the diameter of the larger pulley increases and the smaller pulley becomes smaller, its force can be more increased. Now you know how to choose a motor. What is mean torque and how to increase torque? So what's next? The power supply. I am now going to tell you what is the right power supply to use when using two motors. Actually using two motors requires more electricity. I suggest a 24 volt 5 amperes power supply for this. That's the best and most suitable for your budget. And it is not a problem if you use only one motor. There is no problem if you are currently using a computer power supply, but it will not have enough power for two motors. That's all about the Arduino steering wheel. 
Today, we talked about some very important points in making an FFB wheel. Also, I want to say a little more about the wheel config software. I said in previous videos that every time the wheel is connected to the PC, it is mandatory to open the wheel configuration and change the settings there. No, that's wrong. Actually can just plug and play the game directly. But after you play, turn off the Z toggle switch and unplug it. Sometimes FFB may not work then open wheel configuration and change the settings. So I hope this video will be useful for you. If you like the video, please like it and comment me what you think about this video.